G'day guys, thanks for tuning in to today's live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. Uh, first things first, just wanted to thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, my name's Hewan and we're looking at a very unique uh, group of animals today and I've got a couple to show you. We're actually looking at a group of animals called monotremes. So that includes three different species, the platypus, the short-beaked echidna and the long-beaked echidna. So firstly, we're going to talk about the platypus and uh, Michaela's over here, she's just going to pass me a plat so we can uh, give you guys a bit of a look uh, and, and talk a little bit about her. Now, her name <laughs> is uh, River uh, and she, as you can see, is a very lively animal. Um, now, um, her <laughs> plats are very, very shy. Uh, and mostly active at night. So um, she's probably just adjusting to the light, but she should settle down a little bit soon. Now, River is a female platypus. I would not be holding a male platypus like this. And that's because male plats have venomous spurs behind their hind legs. Now, they have these venomous spurs, which they use to fight other male platypus. Uh, and once, um, <laughs> when they fight, um, it actually feels like a bee sting to them, uh, but to us, it's actually very, very painful. Now, it's said to be comparable to some of our venomous snake bites. It can kill you, but uh, generally, it's just really, really painful. You don't want to get spurred by a male platypus. Now, in the wild, um, they're in the water, and they're uh, mostly an aquatic species. They do spend some time on land, uh, but... Um, they're eating things like yabbies, worms, prawns, any live food underneath the water. And they're actually blind underwater. They actually close their eyes and swim around blind. And they use that bill there that you can see on the camera. And it's got uh, electroreceptors and mechanoreceptors in the bill, which they use to pick up the impulses of the prey in the water. And that's how they use to find uh, their prey. Now, a platypus uh, can eat 19% of its body weight in a 24 hour period. So for a plat like this one that weighs about one and a half kilos, that's about 300 grams of food roughly, which is a lot for a very small animal. And it's really good in captivity, we can actually keep track of what they're eating and how much they're eating because we feed them yabbies. And what they'll actually do is they'll grab onto the yabby and they'll eat the tail and they'll leave behind the legs and heads. So when we're cleaning their exhibit, we can see how many heads they left behind and it's really good indication of how many yabbies uh, the plat's eating and, and what kind of health and condition it is in. So you find them all across the east coast of Australia and as I mentioned they are very shy. You'll often see them coming out at night time. So if you've seen one in the wild it's a pretty good feat um, because they spend most of their time underwater and they can actually hold their breath for about five minutes. So they don't have any gills or anything that allow them to breathe under the water. They're simply just holding their breath. Now, she's a little bit wriggly, um, so I'll pop her in the water so you guys can have a look and see um, how streamlined she is. She's got this nice oily waterproof coat which kind of creates a pocket of air around her. So we'll let her go and you guys can have a bit of a watch of her in the water and see how she gets around. So she'll swim around under the water right now. She's got her eyes closed and she'll be, she'll duck, duck under that log there. And then once we leave, she'll come out and she'll start foraging for food. Particularly when the sun sets, they're mostly nocturnal. So she'll come out then and start doing, doing what she does overnight. So I have another animal to show you now. Uh, the next one I've got is also another native to Australia. This is the short beaked echidna. Now there are actually two different types of echidna. The short beaks, which is the one I've got here, and this is ivy. Now, the other type is the long beaked echidna, which is native to Papua New Guinea, all right? So you don't actually find them in Australia. So echidnas are pretty common too. You can find them uh, all across the East Coast and Tasmania and, and up in Queensland. Uh, and depending on when you find them, their shape and size and sort of color can change. So the echidnas down south and in Tasmania look very, very different. They're big and fluffy. Now, I can hold this animal like this. Uh, it's not gonna shoot its quills at me. Uh, they're not venomous or poisonous or toxic in any way. However, they do ha uh, sort of harbor uh, bacteria. So sometimes if you don't handle them correctly uh, and they do prick you, you can get a, a bit of an infection. But if you know what you're doing and holding them just like this, you'll be just fine. Now, the interesting thing about echidnas is um, what they're eating. And that's basically strictly termites and ants. So in a 24 hour period, a echidna can eat over, you know, tens of thousands of termites. 
Now, in captivity, it's really hard to harvest that amount of live food for the animal. So one of the most sort of frequent questions I get when I'm feeding them is what I'm feeding them. And basically, it comes as like a powder and we mix it with water and we put it in these special PVC feeders and the echidnas stick their little snout there in these holes in the PVC feeders and they use their 15 centimetre long tongue, which is nice and sticky, and they lap up the uh, food in the PVC feeder. And they'll also do this in the wild. Uh, they'll go up to the termite mound or the ant's nest, and they'll use these strong front claws to break into the nest or the termite mound, and they'll stick their beak in or their snout in and use their tongue to lap up all the termites, and they'll sort of stick to them, and, and that's how the echidna will feed. And they've got these shovel-like claws here at the back, which they use uh, when they're digging holes and looking for shelter during the day. It kind of acts like a shovel and it, it gets all the, the, the dirt out of the way as they're digging with those very powerful front feet. Uh, during the day, they're, they're spending most of their time underneath grasses or wedged in between rocks or hollow logs. Uh, you're most often going to see echidnas early morning and late in the afternoon. They breed every year from about August through to October. Um, and one of the coolest things about monotremes uh, is they're actually a warm-blooded animal, so they're a mammal, but they lay eggs. There's only three species of animals that do this, or mammals that do this, and these are the monotremes. And echidna will lay one egg at a time into a very rudimentary pouch, kind of like a kangaroo or a koala, but it is a little bit different. And what will happen is that egg will stay there and the female will incubate it for about 10 days and then it'll hatch. And uh, little baby echidnas and baby plats are called puggles. So uh, like a baby koala is called a joey. Uh, puggles the name for a, a baby echidna or a baby plat, which is pretty cute and cool. Uh, and that animal will stay there till it's about 800 grams, which is about five or six months later. Um, and which mum will basically uh, leave it in a plugged sort of burrow uh, and she'll continue to come back to it and it'll be weaning off mum's milk in this time. And they don't have teats like normal mammals. They sort of secrete uh, the milk from these glands in this rudimentary pouch, which the little puggle echidna can then lap up. Now, these ones are obviously um, fall victim to being roadkill. Um, plats as well have a couple of threats like uh, yabby traps. They'll go into the yabby traps and get trapped in there themselves and also water pollution for plats as well. So it's really important what you can do for plats is just keep an eye out for those signs saying, uh, you know, plats about, don't use yabby traps. Make sure you're looking, seeing if, if anyone's doing anything dodgy and, and reporting them to uh, parks, national parks or anything like that if you see that sort of stuff. So yeah, very unique animals. Uh, monotremes, very, very, very cool. Can you tell us a bit more about their spikes or their, their uh, spines, are they Yeah, called? so, um, and they'll have these quills here, as you can see, all right? And Ivy's got a couple of hers painted uh, green. It doesn't hurt her, that's just how we identify them. Um, and you can see, if you zoom in close, she's actually got fur in between those spines. Now, um, that obviously keeps her warm, but like I said, there's, there's no sort of uh, poison or venom in the spines, and lots of people think that there are, um, and they're not like a, a porcupine um, in which they, they can shoot these at you. They can lose them and they do break off, but they're purely a defensive mechanism. Um, so if you're a, a, a dingo or a, or a predator of this species, um, like I said, they'll wedge themselves in somewhere and they'll hunker down um, and you're going to have a very hard time preying upon an echidna. Uh, there's actually a very famous uh, photo from uh, back in the early 1900s of a, a lace monitor uh, with an echidna kind of half down its throat and the spines are coming out. So the, the lace monitor or goanna didn't really have a good time of eating the echidna. So what does it feel like underneath? Uh, so it's quite soft underneath, as you can see. It's all uh, fur. Um, just like any other animal, it's, it's a little bit coarse and wiry, um, but not extremely soft. How many eggs can they have at a time? They'll lay only one egg at a time, okay? It takes a lot of energy to produce the egg, to incubate it, and then once it's hatched, uh, it takes a lot of energy to raise the puggles. So um, if they lay more than one, uh, it's a little bit too much stress on them. Uh, plats can lay about one to three eggs. Uh, and the incubation period for platypus is about two weeks, and they'll, they're actually coming into breeding at the minute, so uh, August through to October, uh, similar to the uh, echidna. 
So do they only eat termites or do they like, do they like any other like fruits and vegetables or plants? Um, strictly uh, invertebrates, ants and termites and the pupae or eggs or larva of those species. So like I said, very hard to feed them just that in captivity. So they have a substitute diet, which is very, um, it's very, very uh, well developed and, and for what they need to do. So yeah, and what they need, minerals and nutrients, things like that. We have some questions from Instagram and TikTok. How big are the eggs? Uh, when the hatch, probably about yay big. Is that the same yeah. for echidnas and platypus? Yeah, they'd be roughly the same size. I've never seen them personally, uh, but they wouldn't be too much difference between the two, yeah. And how old can each species get? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, there was an echidna that lived uh, in a Philadelphia zoo in the US and it lived for about 49 years, uh, whereas generally um, about 20 to 30 years for echidnas is pretty good in captivity. Plats are a little bit less, about 15 years, although one uh, here in Australia lived to about 21 years old. All right, well, we might wrap it up there. And right, thank well, you so much for showing us. That's okay. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, I hope you all today enjoyed today's live stream. Sorry. Uh, and uh, tune in for tomorrow's live stream. Uh, and we'll see you then. Thanks very much, guys.